let's say you do a study. The study shows you your sample mean is 100. Let's say you know the population standard deviation is equal to 10. And let's say your sample size was 50. And you want a confidence interval. Rather than saying, we think the population mean is around 100, we want to say that we are 95% confident. that mu, the population mean, is within some margin of error of our sample mean, is within some bound of 100. We want to know what that bound is, okay? And our confidence level is 95% or 0 0.95. Well, our formula for that, for that bound, for that range is x bar plus or minus z sigma over root n. We know what sigma is, we know what n is, we know what x bar is, what we have to find is that z value. How do we find it? Well, when we look at our z distribution, we're looking for the central 0.95. Okay, and we want to know the z values that give us these cutoffs. Okay, here it'll be a negative z value, here it'll be a positive z value, because we're looking at the central 0 0.95, then because of symmetry, these two cutoffs will be the same magnitude, just one will be negative and one will be positive. Since the area under the entire curve is 1, we know that the size of these tails is 0 0.05. How do we get 0 0.025? Well, that's just 1 minus 0 0.95 divided by 2. Right? What's not in that central region? That's 1 minus 0 0.95, which is 0 0.05. When we divide that by 2, we get 0 0.025. So we'll have to go to the Z table and find 0 0.025. There's our Z table here. And we look for the probability that's closest to 0 0.025. Lucky for us, it's right here precisely, 0 0.025. And that corresponds to a Z value of negative 1.9. And the second decimal spot is 6. That's a Z value of negative 1.96. Negative 1.96. And because of symmetry, the positive cutoff will be 1.96. And now we have everything we need to calculate our confidence interval. X bar plus or minus Z sigma over root N equals 100 plus or minus 1.96 times 10 divided by the root 50. And then you can make that calculation.